I think that if if you if you lived in Hughes Hall for four years, or and I lived there for four and a half years, and and Sleepy and I were talking about that, you got to get one degree for whatever discipline that that you you were in, and then you got to get another degree in general education for living in Hughes Hall. I mean, they couldn't say that those athletes are living in a they're living in the best dorm because I mean it was the sorry dorm on campus. You know, and, and there's no nothing but concrete floors and you know no carpet and one john for everybody on the bottom floor. And the rooms are 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 not any bigger than you know from there to there. No, you got they're not that big. Well, I'm being nice. Oh, okay. It's Arkansas Tech, you know. We took the doors off the closets and put the towels in, and it had a door. You know how you go in the showers down down there and go in, and and dammed that all up and and filled it all up with warm water. Climbed over the top, and we had us a heated pool down there, downstairs in the basement. Anyway, we were kind of swimming, swimming around. We probably had it probably six, eight, probably six, seven foot deep. And we'd stayed with it about as long as we could. And uh, so we finally decided we better let the water out. So we let that water out and it just flooded the whole downstairs basement. Part of that water went in a firing range and it went, you know, we don't know where we don't know where it went, and then of course we left, and uh, that was that was quite an experience. You go back to these concrete floors because that's we have one big garbage can on each end, and mm -hmm. everybody just I happen to be right there by the stairs where you go down to the two bathroom the one John and the shower that everybody has to use. And there's a big there's a big thirty gallon drum, that's where all the garbage goes. Well about regularly, you know, once a month, for some reason, about twelve o'clock when everything's really still, somehow that garbage can would go over on those concrete and it would hit every concrete step okay. all the way down. Bam just you know, it's an exploding sound. So quiet in that place and garbage everywhere. And we knew what was coming in. Don Severe was coming to figure out what was going on. And you could hear him, you know, he was six foot eight, nine. Yeah. Coming down, yeah. Those, you know, there. And he'd always look in because me and Goose Shepherd, we were right there by the step. And he would always look in at us. And he'd look, and we were just, we were, we're just, guilty. we weren't guilty. Anyhow, we were acting like we were asleep. And there, right across the hall was BJ. You know, Animal Moore and Toothpick Bryant. And he'd go in there and look at them, and everybody was. And then he'd sit out there and just stand there trying to figure out. And this was a. This didn't happen. This happened more than once. And, but he would always look at us, and nobody said a thing. And he'd always walk all the way. And you could hear him walking all the way back down to his room. He slept. He stayed there with us. You know, he had to. But that was a, that was a typical. You know, that was our. To this day, no one knows who, who threw the garbage. You know, and the, the cans down the, the hall about once a month. And you don't know either. So don't blame, so don't blame it on me. <laughs> I probably told this story, you know, the lights go out one time in the dorm and boy we all just started fighting and raising cane and and match, rest, yeah. you know. And uh, it got a little out of control, you know, and yeah. here comes Nig Bynum, you know, and somebody hollers Nig's on the floor. Well, everybody, you know, runs to, runs to their room, and I'm caught, he's coming from my room, and I take off running, I run down the stairs. He's chasing me all this time, you know, dark, and Nig's, we're all scared of Nig. He's scarred from here to here, he's, he's a bad dude. We go all the way around that building, and I look up, he's still behind me, you know, so I go up the back stairs, and they're, they're 20 feet high, you know. I go in the first room, I do, and then I shut the door and I grab it. And I look around and there's B.J. Moore, Toothpick Bryant, and I got a bucket full of beer. 
you know. <laughs> and I'm holding this door. Well, I said, well, he won't pick the right door. Nick picks the right door. And I'm holding and he, he pulls the darn door almost to, off the hinges. And he walks in there. We're scared to death. You know, we're trembling, you know. And we're, you know, you know, and he looks and he says, you know, he just said, you know, Shorty will take care of this tomorrow and I'll take care of it later. That's the last we ever heard of. It. You know, we, you know, we didn't know what they were going to do. You know, those guys, they, you know, they they treat us as athletes, but they, I think they treat us kind of as as their kids too. You know, they they knew we, you know, we didn't have much to do. You know, and they, no place to go. You know, give us a break every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. 